Hello everyone, welcome to the second lesson in our Virtual Nature in the Classroom series um, by the Slater Museum of Natural History. So today for our second lesson, the materials that you are going to need is your nature journal, and that's the journal that you worked in um, in our previous lesson. And you're gonna also need color pencils, the bird specimen photos, which are gonna be linked in the description below, the beak and the feet background sheet, which will also be linked in the description below, and lastly, an info ID card for the bird specimen that you choose. Um, but don't worry, you don't need that until the very end of the lesson. So you wanna make sure that you have all of those things downloaded or easily accessible on your computer um, before we get started. Uh, so today, we are going to be learning about birds. Um, it's our bird diversity lesson. And so before we begin, I wanted to just um, spend a little bit of time talking about why birds are so important. Um, so birds um, are really, really important for a variety of different reasons, including that birds control pests. So for farming, um, birds help control um, lots of um, insects that might eat crops, but they also will control populations of mosquitoes, right? No one really likes mosquitoes for when they bite us. So they're really good at controlling pests. They also pollinate a lot of flowers and plants. Um, and they are also nature's cleanup crew. So animals like vultures and other um, animals that are uh, other birds that are scavenging uh, birds they will actually clean up along with insects a lot of animals that have died um, and that's really important to help keep our um, kind of our natural settings clean lastly they also will spread seeds and this can be really important for growing up new areas maintaining um, different habitats so they do a lot of really important roles for our ecosystems Lastly, um, for us as humans, they inspire us. So they inspire artists in different paintings and drawings that they do, but they also inspire um, different elements of science. So a big one that we think about is planes. Um, their wings are oftentimes um, inspired or they kind of came um, off of the way that birds fly as well. So birds inspire us kind of um, in many different ways in our daily lives. So what we're gonna do is to kind of kick off our lesson today, we're gonna go ahead and turn to page seven in our nature journal. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. When you're on page seven, you're gonna see two questions on there. The first question is, what are some things that birds might eat? And the second question is, what are some habitats that birds might live in? So we're gonna spend just kind of a couple minutes, maybe take five minutes or so to do a quick little brainstorm. And then when we come back, um, we'll kind of go over some different habitat types and food types that birds might be eating all across the world. So go ahead and pause here and spend five minutes to write down some things that come to mind. All right, so now that you have your brainstorm list on page seven, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the things that we came up with here at the museum. So for that first question, what are some things that birds might eat? Um, we came up with this list here. So one of the first things that people often think of are worms. And so yes, lots of birds like robins um, will pull up worms from the soil or from um, grass, grassy patches um, in yards. They will also go for things like nuts and seeds, fruits and berries. A lot of birds will also hunt other birds. So we often call these raptors. And so some examples of raptors include owls, hawks, falcons, and eagles. Um, and we actually have a couple of, of examples up here with us. So the peregrine falcon um, is a really famous example. So peregrine falcons are known for speed. They are specialized for hunting other birds. And here in cities, their favorite type of uh, bird prey is actually pigeons. Um, that's because pigeons are so plentiful in cities, um, but also because they're pretty easy prey. Um, pigeons don't really um, tend to fly away very quickly. They also tend to kind of perch or hang out in different places in cities. So they're really easy for peregrine falcons um, to find and to basically swoop down and catch. Now, peregrine falcons, um, when they go into a hunting mode, what they can do is actually tuck their wings by the side of their body like this. And when they're um, kind of tucked in that torpedo shape, they can basically dive, uh, kind of dive down and reach speeds up to 240 miles per hour. So they are very, very effective um, at hunting other birds uh, that might be trying to fly away or might be kind of mid-flight when they're being hunted. Okay. Next up on our list, we have uh, small mammals. So that might include rabbits, squirrels, um, sometimes small cats or some small dogs. Um, so birds like eagles 
are mostly fish eaters, um, but they will sometimes go after small um, pets. You can see the size of this bird in comparison to my body. Um, so eagles will also go after some small mammals. Next up on our list is fish. So bald eagles, as I mentioned, will eat fish. Another really common bird that will eat fish is the seahawk or the osprey. Um, so you can see, again, they've got a really big hooked beak. A lot of raptors or a lot of meat-eating birds are going to have this hooked beak and it basically to help them um, eat that tissue, to help them, eat them, uh, help them eat that animal matter. We also have carrion um, or dead things on our list. So these are going to be the types of food that scavengers will eat. So sometimes if an animal dies from natural causes, from disease, or for roadkill, um, those animals will often be preyed upon by vultures, um, crows, ravens, other animals that might scavenge and eat those remains. Last three, we have nectar. Nectar is a favorite for small birds like hummingbirds, also other birds like honeycreepers. And oftentimes they will have small straw-like beaks that are really slender. Um, and they'll basically use that to probe in and out of um, flowers. So they're looking for nectar. If you're not sure what nectar is, um, you can actually make examples of nectar at home by just actually adding um, sugar into water. So it's basically kind of a, sh a sugary, syrupy um, liquid that flowers produce. Okay. Lastly, we have reptiles and insects. So some birds um, might eat things like snakes, lizards, things like that. Insects can be any sort of insect, so whether or not they're living on the ground or they're up in the skies if, they're, um, if they have wings and are able to fly. Alright, so if you want to add a couple of things that you didn't um, have on your list, go ahead and add those there. And then we're going to move on to our second question. So our second question is, what are some habitats that birds might live in? And again, you might have some things that are similar or different from our list up here, and that's okay. Feel free to add them as we go over them. So the first ones on our list are the forest, this can also include the rainforest, and the woods, which are basically kind of a drier uh, version of the forest, um, kind of put, put very simply. The open ocean, so there's lots of birds that actually spend their entire lives or a good portion of their lives um, flying and feeding um, over the open ocean. They will actually sleep over the open ocean as well. Lakes and ponds, mountains, this might also include caves in the mountains. The tundra, which would be um, snowy fields, like what you think of um, where penguins live. And then the desert and prairie grassland or savanna. All right. So go ahead and you can pause this video here if you want to take a look at both of our lists. Add some last things that you might want to um, have for future record. Alright, so we are now going to move on to the specimen portion um, of our nature journal. So today you're going to have three options and these are all birds that are local to Washington. Um, so these are all birds that we can find around here in our backyards, in our oceans, our forests. So bird um, choice number one is going to be this bird here. Choice number two is going to be this bird here. And choice number three is going to be this bird here. So at this point, um, you are going to want to make sure that you have the photos pulled up for the bird of your choosing. So if you need to pause the video here um, and download those photos or just make them a little bit more accessible for yourself, um, go ahead and do that. But when you're ready, what we're going to be doing is um, just like day one, we're going to be focusing on making some observations and measurements with the bird specimen of your choosing. Okay. So what you'll notice is on page eight, it should look something like this. On page eight, there's this handy dandy diagram. I want you to take a moment and look through this. This is gonna help you um, kind of have a search engine for what kinds of measurements you're gonna be looking for when you're going through those um, photos of our bird specimens, okay? So you wanna learn how to look at the body length of your bird, the beak length of your, or the, your bird's beak length um, and your bird's foot length. Okay. On page nine, when you turn to the next page, there's a spot where you're going to be writing that information down here. So I've done this with an example bird with a robin. And so for my bird, I noticed that it was 2.5 centimeters for its beak length, 22 centimeters for its body length. 
and 3.5 centimeters for that foot length. And just as kind of an extra um, help, that diagram shows you that you're measuring from the ankle all the way down to the middle or the longest toe of your bird. So again, we've tried to kind of show that in our image, but make sure that you're looking for that portion of your, um, the measurement for your bird. To the right of our uh, measurements, there's a spot where it says beak type and foot type. So for this part, we are going to need that beak and feet background sheet. This is also a material um, that's going to be linked down below. It's probably going to be um, a PDF file that has two different pages on it, so you want to look for that. We're going to start on the beak side of our sheet here. Okay? So we're going to walk through and just kind of talk about what each of the columns are doing. So the first column here, it says the beak works like a this is a column that has different names for each of the beaks that you'll see here. And this isn't an exhaustive list. Um, these are just some of kind of the main beak types that we tend to see in birds. So the very first one, this picture here, we would call that kind of beak a strainer. In the middle, the middle column here is labeled description. So it's basically describing the characteristics of the beak um, that you might be looking at today. So for example, the strainer beak is wide and flat and it has ridges along the inner edges. The last column is how it helps the bird get the food and or eat its food. Okay. So again, for the strainer portion, it says it allows ducks and some other water birds to filter tiny plants and animals out of the water. Okay. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using this sheet to basically come across or to kind of help you figure out what kind of beak your bird has. And then if you flip um, it over to the next part of the PDF, you should see the same kind of thing, but for your feet. So it has the same kinds of columns. It has the names of different kinds of feet, a description of different kinds of feet, and then also how that foot either helps the bird kind of navigate its habitat or how it helps the bird um, catch or um, grab the things that it's, it's eating as well. So you wanna make sure that you do that for both the beak and the feet. So as an example, this is my bird specimen. This is an American Robin. And so for me, if I were to kind of go through and take a look at some of the different pictures here and also read through some of the descriptions, I could figure out based on that, that my bird has a tweezer beak. So I wrote that up here. Same thing, I'm then gonna take a look at the foot side. Going through my list as well, I would say that the robin most likely has walker feet, the first one on my list here. So I would basically write that as a slot in my paper. The last thing that you're going to be doing on page nine after you filled out your measurements and um, your beak and your foot type is you're going to come down and do some scientific sketches. So you can either do a close up of just your beak if you want to focus on just uh, this kind of small part of your bird, or you can do like the head portion like I did for my sketch. So when you're measuring um, your beak, you want to make sure that you're doing that in centimeters. So we've included the centimeter side of our ruler or a measuring tape on those images, um, but make sure you're also adding the units when you're adding um, your measurements to your drawings. Other things you wanna make sure you're including on top of that measurement or that scale bar is labels. So here I've, measured, or I've labeled some basic descriptions. So the fact that my bird has black feathers on the top of its head, you also want to add colors. So if I had color pencils, I would add in some color just to add a little bit more life to my um, picture here. And then the last thing is you want to be adding details. So I've noticed that my robin has these tiny little white feathers surrounding its eye. So I could actually add those details. I could add the texture of my feathers as well. You want to do the same thing for your feet sketches as well. So make sure you have a little checklist for yourself. Do you have a scale bar? Do you have details? Do you have labels? And have you added color to your sketches? Okay, so go ahead and pause your video here. Um, let's take about 15 minutes, work on your sketches. If you finish a little bit sooner, you can um, go ahead and resume and we'll um, start on our last part of page nine. Alright, so by now you should be wrapped up with um, the first part of page 9. We're now going to finish up with page 9 um, with that last paragraph, and it's for our hypothesis. So just like day 1, we made a hypothesis about our specimen. 
Today we're going to be making a hypothesis about the, uh, the bird specimen that you worked with. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is pull up your beak and feet background sheet because the last column here is going to be really, really helpful in kind of helping you develop your hypothesis, um, especially if you haven't read through that when you were um, kind of uh, figuring out the, the beak type and the foot type of your bird. You'll also uh, kind of recognize the sentence format that we have up here on the board. This is similar to what we did on day one. So the main two things you want to be including in your hypothesis is a prediction or your guess, and then following that up with a reason or some evidence to back that up. So to give us an example, I'm going to take my example bird here and my beak and foot card. So I found out earlier that my robin has a tweezer beak. So if I were to go to my beak and foot card here and read out um, what it's used for, it says that the tweezer allows insect eaters to catch their prey. So from my hypothesis, I could then say, I think my bird eats insects because it has a tweezer beak. So the next part is gonna be a hypothesis for where you think your bird might live. And so this is where those different habitat types um, are going to come back. So if you need to flip to the first page of the bird diversity lesson, you can review those different habitat types that we went over today. When you're ready, we're going to come back here and the first thing you want to do again is just remember what kind of um, habitat or sorry, what kind of foot type um, your bird um, had and we're going to use that to kind of help us figure out what habitat they might live in. So with my robin, I found out that they had a walker foot. So again, if I flip to the back, Walkers allow birds to walk on um, flat ground, large, and they're wide enough to provide stability. So when I've seen robins walking around, I notice that they like to walk around kind of in grassy areas, um, both in people's yards, but also in the forest. And they're using their feet to basically help them as they're moving around and searching for insects. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my own observations, but I'm also thinking about where I might find the food source that these birds are eating. So for my bird, I could say, I think my bird lives in the forest or in grassy um, yards and cities because my bird eats insects and there's lots of insects in forests or in kind of grassy patches and my bird has walking feet which would help that bird move through those grassy spaces as they're looking for insects. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pause this video, take about five minutes to finish up with your hypothesis. And then again, make sure that you're looking at the beak and foot card if you need some help coming up with your hypotheses. So now that you've finished up with page nine and you've written your hypothesis, go ahead and turn to page 10. The top of page 10, there's a spot where you can do a free drawing. And so you're basically gonna draw what your hypothesis, um, your hypotheses were. So you can draw a picture of your bird, you can draw it hunting, you can draw it foraging for food, um, but make sure to draw it kind of where you think it lives. So if you think it lives in a lake, you can draw a really beautiful lake, draw the kinds of plants and trees and other animals you would expect to see, um, but just don't forget to draw in the food that you think your bird might eat. That way your bird doesn't go hungry as well. So again, take another five, 10 minutes, um, add some color to your drawing as well, and then we'll come back together for the last part of our lesson. All right, so the last part of our lesson today is gonna to be the bottom of page 10. And so just like for day one, we use those ID cards to basically learn a little bit more about our specimen. We're gonna be doing the same thing here today. So you should have um, earlier downloaded um, ID cards that look something like this. Go ahead and locate the bird card for each of your birds, and we'll have them um, labeled with one, two, or three on there. So what I want you to do is give your card a read and on page 10, there's a spot for you to write three facts that you like about your bird. This can be things that you find really interesting, things that you find just really fun, um, things that you can share with friends and family um, when you see them next. Okay, okay. so we've reached the end of lesson two for um, the Nature in the Classroom virtual uh, series. So please join us for our last lesson, which is going to be all about mammal skulls. So we'll be loading that video up here. So stay tuned um, for that next one.